The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. We're back. There we are. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour Monday, Monday, the 14th of October, middle of the month. And we're looking at the Dow after the spectacular move on Friday. Not a spectacular close, but a spectacular intraday move, uh, really going up about 1,000 points in, in days. It's done that before, and then it's given back a chunk. But I'm looking at this and saying, because of my Dow Quartet, index index in quotes you can never have an index on four stocks uh, that is uh, caterpillar g uh, caterpillar ibm triple m and utx um, holding so well on friday doing nicely and holding well today i'm kind of i'm I like what I see. Now, I have an expression. Uh, I've made a little slight modification here through a, a spelling error. So instead of saying the rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience, uh, I'm going to say the rectangle formation can linger a lot longer than your patience. Look, here we are, stuck in a trading band since uh, right there, since 9.56 at 20. 964 in the e-mini, SB e-mini, runs up to 2972 area, and then it's just stuck in that range ever since then, right in the middle of it right now, 2969. <clears throat> and there it is, peak D and the peak E in the in the 10-minute chart. MACD is turning down, but the technicals are still holding very well. And the uh, stochastic is only at 73%, and yet the price is holding. So if there is a close, at any any on any 10 minute bar below 29.62 between now and two o'clock expects a weakness into the close um, and it's down a dollar 75 right now and if there's a push into the 29.74 area it says hey this is just holding steady as a rock um, that's good action all right so those are the parameters to watch let's get back to the nitty gritties <clears throat> in the Dow and of course, I mentioned Dow index just now. That is, uh, let me just show you this. Look, Caterpillar. Right now, Caterpillar is down 60 cents. Had a very strong move Friday. It's holding nice inside bar so far. Down 60 cents at 127.80. Hit the 200-period uh, moving average on Friday. That line at 129.28 and pulled back. Uh, but as long as it's holding in this 127.80 area, that's like a magnet to try to get to 129s again. Uh, if you look at IBM, not as good. It's down $1.16, $141.60. Made a peak D, but holding in a kind of a sideways range. Uh, sideways range, you can see even better here in the weekly chart, even in the monthly chart. But look at this, Triple M up. One uh, two point seventy four right now up a dollar sixty point eighty four. That weekly chart of just being smashed of the twenty two hundred twenty high back in April just plummets down to last week's low in the hundred and fifty area. Now it's at one hundred and sixty, and this is a very nice move today. Leg A, MACD's trying to cross positive. The casting's okay at twenty percent. A lot of work needs to be done, but it has taken out a downtrend line. How do you do that? You just go to the last major high, you grab it. You hit as many uh, upper levels, it could be wicks, it could be the, the candles, as many as possible, just drag it down. You can see we're about a point and a half above, maybe a little more, maybe almost two, yeah, about a point and a half above the trend line resistance. And this is an, this is a expanding cone formation. So this will be very good if there's a close near the 50 period moving average of 160 163, 162.73 is the number. Let's see if we can go a little above it. 163 anytime this week would be very good action. And then you've got United Technologies. So we've been long at different times, uh, Triple M and, uh, sorry, Caterpillar, and we've been long UTX. Let's see how this one works out. It's, it's pushing the Chapman Wave inside track 
repellent zone. If these four stocks, three out of the four, can move nicely higher, that's going to be a good support to the to the Dow over the week. Now let's get to the other nitty gritties. We we'll go back to the Dow itself. The Dow itself is closed is right now 20 up 24 at 2684. Uh, 26,840, I should say. This this inside chapter wave inside track repellent zone starting at 26,910 to about 27,042 uh, suggests that you need to clear right into the 27,090s to say, ha, now we're free of that resistance. That all becomes a whole 26,000. 900 to 800 area becomes a cushion of support, trampoline support, hopefully. And that monthly chart, look at that monthly chart. It's really improving a lot. It wasn't looking that way at 25,743. That previous th the week from Thursday at that low, it was looking very poor. Look at that. The weekly chart was looking very, very poor. It was testing key trend line support. Let's go to the uh, S&P. Same thing here. So the Dow, if we can get into the 27,090 area, that's very good action. But it has pretty good support all the way into the 26,650, 26,600 area. Uh, support now in the S&P at one, minus 133, at 2968.95. Yes, you've got the whole gap, but the gap low is tw down in the 2946 area. We some 20 points above that. So that's really good cushion. But I would say it's really the resistance that we have to be looking at. Above 29.82 in the next two days would be very good. If we, if we can't do that, it's going to take a little more time before it can build up that upside pressure. The uh, QQQ, which is the index 100, up 0.06, a nice, a nice percentage gain, but only up 0.12 in the uh, actual price is 191.23. The reason why I say it's 9 percentage gain is that after a spectacular gap up move, it only went fractionally underneath the low of Friday, which was uh, the, uh, the open was 190.80. The actual low was 190.72. And today's low is just a tad under at 190.65. Let me drag this across you to say the rectangle formation is a very wide rectangle. If you're looking at it in the, in the uh, daily chart, but it's holding in that rectangle, holding nicely. Let's see what the SMHs are doing, because they acted very well on Friday. They made a nominal new high. It's unbelievable. You can go from 120.71 in April as an all-time high, then to 123.13, uh, two and a half points above, to go to the July high. Then it pulls back again. And then it goes to 123.88, fractionally higher um, in this move. Uh, right in, look at this, Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone, just a remarkable technical tool that just tells you, gives you a real good clue is to say, hey, breaking above that is important, but until it does that, be careful, because that's that's like a an umbrella of resistance. All right, so um, holding nicely now. The IWM is trading down 20 at 150.03. It's been the laggard all the way through, and it remains the laggard. Now, let's just go to gold. Gold was up seven points, yep, up seven at 14.95. But look, it's been stuck in this rectangle formation. Let me squeeze this a little bit. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There you are. You see that rectangle that I showed, that it could go above, it could go below, but it keeps wanting to come back into the 1500 area. It's trading right now at 14.95. Until it takes out 1465, it's stuck in this range. On the downside, that'll be 1465 or lower. And on the upside, 1523, and then gold takes out, takes the upside. Uh, I'll be right back. That's a Chapman Tiger Ignitions Hour. Be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Bell's Chapman. Remember that rectangle formation, the two-minute chart? Stuck in, just stuck, 29.69. Huh, very interesting. Okay, let's get back to our story. Our story says that the uh, gold has held very nicely. And so is the dollar. I'm also showing the VIX because in the den, it was mentioned, and I'm more and more kind of a, a joke, it was mentioned the end of the VIX as we know it. And I said, wow, I wonder how many times I've heard about the end of the VIX. Not until they ban human nature, it is here forever. As long as we get a little nervous and we get a little, we get a little kind of sanguine, those two uh, uh, barometers of emotion will always be there. So 14.97 right now for the VIX coming down. Uh, you'd expect that the Dow would be quite a bit high in the S&P, but after such a spectacular day on Friday, you always expect some kind of a give back. Now, this is going to be very important. You see the way the dollar is holding here now? I've spoken about this for some time. I'll just reiterate it here. There are three things that are really important as far as I'm concerned in this whole phase that we're in. One is that the dollar represents the financial, U.S. Fin uh, currency financial aspect as a, a measure of confidence. Just think of it very simply. Like the Harley Davidson icon around the world, it just represents U.S. motorbikes. I'm talking about the company. What is hog trading it right now? Hog is down at 35. Well, way, way off the low of 30. It was once in the 65 area. It's just, you know, it's, it's had a problem. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about it as an icon. And if you look at the dollar, it's just held very nicely. Yes, it has. It's gone to a sell mode in the daily. I haven't yet got a sell signal on the weekly. And the monthly is still in leg D, but those Ds, you remember the Chapman Wave methodology? We're always looking for Ds. What happens at a peak D? Where can I kind of find this? Yes, right here. There it is. Uh, we try to identify the lowest, most obvious low bar. In this case, 9703, way back in August, was the last, uh, one of the last ones. And then it ran up. And you try to count each successively higher peak, and you alphabetize them, uppercase on the way up, and you can go 
seven higher peaks. It's all the way to a G, but it's the fourth highest peak. A, B, C, peak D is where other things can happen. We're only looking for three patterns, straight down, straight up, arch formation or arc formation, or a cup formation. Maybe we'll stick with the three letters, arc or cup. And uh, then you can get the combination, but it's the same three things. Here's the combination of two, straight down, red line because it's the yellow ar uh, ye sorry the red arch formation if it takes out the left side low it means one thing if it takes out on the green side takes out the left side high it means something else positive so it's real simple four peaks you start to check them out you can recycle to the upside but it's at that fourth highest peak that other things can happen let's move that away and let's see what happened here we went to a peak d in the dollar at 99.46 on the 1st of October, we're in a leg B. It looks like a trough B. The MACD is weak. The stochastic is weak. But this is a, a sell mode. However, the weekly chart has gone to a peak D and is holding very nicely at the 9-period green line and the 14-period the black line, moving averages. The MACD hasn't crossed negative, and the stochastic is under 80% to 73%. And you've got your leg D. The previous peak D at 103.82 back in January of 2017. So a little bit of a slide. Maybe let's call it almost a 20% 20 point slide to the February low of 88.25 in 2018. Subscribers went long at 90.07. Uh, I think it was the 6th of April went long and uh, remained long. Take it just a tiny little bit off. And I suspect that this represents the currency of importance. That's all I'm saying. And it's the dollar. And if you look at the um, the gold and silver, gold is a currency of fear, and it's just holding because there's so many, so many potential uh, conflagrations and things that could happen overseas. That this gold is really being bought as a hedge. Silver is acting, it's kind of following, it's acting okay. It's not great. It's actually the chart in the daily is often a little bit better than the gold, but it doesn't, the weekly charts don't match. It's much weaker in the weekly chart. And gold at up 0.11 at 1765 is flattening out in the technicals, but it's just, it's, it's just fluctuating within a range between 18 and 17, and it's just kind of stuck there for now. Now, if you look at the EUR USD, look at this. The euro had a very nice rally off the low from a couple of weeks ago. I should have typed that in. It's, it, it always gets smoothed out, but I also should have known the price. Um, 1.08792. Am I going to remember that? 1.08792. Oh, eight, seven, nine, two. I think that's right. And now it's showing you 1.1027. So very nice rally, but it's done it before and it fails. Uh, the, the weekly chart is in a, 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 a trough D. The MACD is improving finally, and the stochastic is trying to rally, but basically flat at 22%. Until it can get to the 1.112-ish area, I think this is just kind of stuck for now. But if the dollar starts to pull back, I think the dollar's in for a little bit of a breather here. It's had a fantastic run. So watch the euro and the USD JPY uh, fail to move with the dollar. It's doing something a little differently. Um, it's actually showing a little more strength than the dollar. Uh, the dollar's been weak, and the um, yen, USD JPY at 108.40 minus 0.019. Is, is this a brand new leg A or is it an, a follow through E? So I usually just put them both in, E slash A. E says, be careful because you can pull back if you get repelled by the 200 period moving average at 108.76. And A says, wow, that's fantastic. All you need now is to go to 109.20 and that would be like a new leg B and that would be very positive. And that would help leg B in the weekly chart for the yen. So, all right, let's get to the other nitty gritties. You've got high-grade copper. High-grade copper is uh, right now up a little bit. Yep, up 0.04. No, 0 0.001 at 2.629. Yeah, it's holding. It's trying to rally, come off the bottom, but it's still at the lower end of the range. I'm going to do something a little differently now. Let's look at the TLT in relation to the patterns. So I spoke about patterns. What are we always looking for? Cup formations and arch formations. Look at these arch formations, little mini cup 
gave you a double top pattern at the 148.90 level, August the 28th, plunges down to the one, I say plunges, I should have said just sharply low at 136.54, 13th of September, rally strongly to the 148 level uh, just a week and a half ago, and now it's trading at 140. Uh, 1.27. So we're going to be watching this very closely to see what happens because there's that H pattern in the weekly chart and it's suggesting, I'm not going to say it suggests strongly in the daily, but the weekly chart is suggesting the MACD is turned negative, the stochastic's down at 69%, the pattern of the arch formation, lowercase h, is, is very relevant here. We've only just begun the first couple of hours of a new week. Let's look at it Wednesday. But if the TLT, for any reason, is trading under 139.50, it's at 141.26 right now, that's going to suggest that T-bonds are going to pull back a little bit more and yields are going to go higher. We'll look as we go to the break, we've got TNX, Look, it's the inversion, and it's kind of taking out the left side um, high. So we'll watch this because it does look like uh, yields are hmm, yields are actually running quite nicely. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, everyone. So I was asked if I could look at Hack and Cyber. So Hack is the uh, ETF prime cyber security. Uh, e you know, this is, this is a generic for the cyber area security stocks this is i must say it's a little weird 
right in this, the heart of cybersecurity awareness, I've been kind of shocked that the, the ETF hack trading at 37.77 up 25 cents right now, having made an all time high, I've got this as a peak B. I can't have it as anything else right now. A, B, C. I could have it as a, hmm, then it's a D slash B. All right, let me just do that just to be as thorough as I can because I have a lot of people who. Uh, use the Chapman wave methodology. I like to be as clear as possible. So that would be a recycle, and then we get new peak A, peak B, peak C, and this would be a D slash B. Um, the reason why I thought that it should hold and go higher, the high was just at about 42, and it pulled back to the 36 area. Now I'm looking at it, and it's trying to rally, but I'm kind of disappointed, and I'm a little mystified that the security stocks, I think it's just that they ran up so much that they're digesting the gains. Even now, in this rotational market, I would have expected that the cyber area would just hold like a rock, because after all, that's just so important. But it's pulled back. I mean, look, six points is not a big deal on a $42 stick stock. But it had gone from 40 down to 31 which is a lot more into the December low. So this to me is a little bit of a surprise. And um, we are, we're not in it. At some point, I'd like to get into it. I think we just have to hold off. I think the sideways action in the weekly chart says it needs time. It doesn't necessarily need much more in price. So I hope I'm, I'm being clear by saying uh, hack needs time. Uh, you know that in my newsletter, we're following these things really closely. And cyber, here, yeah, where did it go? I'm going to type that in. Cyber, it's, it's the same thing. Cyber, we we're long. We're not long anymore. And it's trading in the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m formation. It was a leader Israeli network security software company, CYBR, trading at 102.90. So all I can say is have patience. It, it, it looks to me like it needs a little more time, not all that much in price. Well, six points is a lot for a $102 stock, but not that much when you think that it was at 148 So give it time. I just don't think it's quite ready yet. I think we will have an opportunity, but I do believe that in this peak F, you, you need to see a decent consolidation as a hat trick top has unfolded. Probably you need another month or so before it really starts to tackle the upper level of the 140s. Uh, sorry, 130s. And that's just the way we're looking at it now. We've got Scott in Safety Harbor. Scott, how are you? Uh, back out of X again and looking for your guidance. Uh, obviously, I mean, I, I, I made a huge profits last week on the, on the volatility. It was just too easy. It would go up to 12, pull back to 1150, back and then it hit 1005. I'm like, you, this is a gift from above. <laughs> Good. Okay, hit, so you know, Scott. That was one of my largest you... trades I've ever made of 45,000 shares. It was, uh, I could, couldn't resist it. Started getting in at 1030 and bought it all the way down to 10. So where would you say I go from here? I'm completely out right now. Okay, that was my question. Where are you right now? Is the fact that it's you know, U.S. Steel, U.S. U.S. Steel is trading. The symbol is X, trading at eleven dollars and twenty-nine cents, down five cents. Had an absolutely fabulous move. It just dipped under ten the other day. It went to nine ninety-three. Let me just type that in so I've got that on the record. Nine ninety-three. And let's face it, on a percentage basis, to go from nine ninety-three to just over eleven dollars and fifty cents, uh, that is a big percentage move. However, what I am impressed with is it's at a G slash C in the week weekly chart, and you've got a little doji candle forming in the monthly. And I'm wondering, are we finally beginning to see U.S. Steel not necessarily turn the corner as a profit-making company at this particular point, but as it turned the tide in terms of being oversold and now trying to form a base before any either bad news or good news unfolds? And that says to me, Today's action so far, nice green candle. Uh, let's, why is it green if it's down below, if it's down 0.05? Um, that's interesting. Oh, because it opened, it opened and now it's green for the day. Okay. What I am looking at here is 
I think, Scott, you're absolutely correct. Keep this on your radio. Remember, we said that once it was starting to form a base in that 10 area, it looked like it was a perfect for you because it was a stock in play. For the moment, I'm still going to suggest to you that you're in, you take your gains, and you're out. There's going to be a moment here where it pulls back, and either it suddenly takes out that 10 level because of news on, on China, whatever it is, but I'm just telling you this, that if it starts to rally, and at any point in October, it starts to close above 12, close, that is, above $12.15, I think it started to form a really good base in the 10, uh, 1050 to, to 10, 1025 area. So keep it on your list. Exactly, it's 1050 on the base. Yeah. Right. So I, what I'm thinking here is that if by any chance there's, a, there's an up move tomorrow in the market, if U.S. Steel is able to garner some strength and it closes for leg B, that is, if it doesn't go above today, if it doesn't go above 11.52, but tomorrow it goes above 11.52, I this is the first time that I'm looking at and saying, the weekly chart is going to be so important on Friday. Is this is this a low of $9.93 that's going to hold at least not for maybe a day, but this time for quite a few weeks, maybe even two months? Or is it just another one of those base testing things? Because the MACD in the weekly chart has rallied and the price hasn't followed suit. But the stochastic is trying to form a base in the 17% area. So if it suddenly goes to 22% or 23%, and U.S. Steel is trading up at 11.55. Uh, That'll be the first time I'm seeing signs that you might, for the first time, get a really nice move that's sustained. I just think in this envir environment, I would still do what you're doing. I'd go in and I'd go out. Even if, like we had said once before, if you want to start holding a tiny position, it's just your core position for three, four, five months' time, you still do have to have um, at least a 10% risk. So I think this is still the time right now just to go in and out. There's going to be a time when it makes higher highs and higher lows, where absolutely that's where you can have maybe one position you're just holding. You couldn't care what happens because your target is up in the 14s. But the short-term trading is what you look for. So congratulations. That was really nice. Let's see if it can hold. Uh, the 1126, 1124 area today, that'll be a good sign. I, you know, tomorrow's outlook for me is I think, I just think the market is tired right now. I think tomorrow is going to be uneventful because I, I, I honestly just think people are tired. And I, and I also think that a lot of the, the bigger traders may be uh, uh, just taking some sort of break from my, a little I don't breather. see a lot of money I, I don't coming disagree. in right now today. Do I don't disagree with you. Hey, congratulations, Scott. Keep it up. That sounds great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for calling. We'll be right back. Dow's up 29. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So let's do a couple of things. This is the beginning of the week. Scott uh, in uh, Florida kept called. We've gone through United States Steel. We've, so we've gone through that. We've gone through all the different indices. Question Ruby had. I'm pleased she did this because I was just going to say, let's look at some of the other things. So KC is coffee. Put it out. Typed into the den. No, type it onto your chart. KC, spill over onto your chart. There it is. So KC is having a little bit of a rally today. Made that peak. Do you remember the Chapman wave? We're always looking for that fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. There it is. There's your peak D right there on the 16th of September. And this is a continuous contract, 104.95. Put a down arrow in. And you've got trough A, no, trough A, trough B, trough C. Let me just type it in. Have we got a trough D yet? Yep, I think we do. A, B, C, D. So the reason why you see this candle here, a little upside down uh, Chapman Wave Roman candle, is because the MACD is still very weak. It's if the, the expanse between the red and the green line, the fast moving average and the slow moving average is very big. On balance volume did turn up. And the stochastic is just at 8%. So it's gone from like 6% to 8%. It's struggling to turn. And the weight of the weekly chart, that arch formation that has come down for a lower low, close, uh, yes, a close below the left side low. We, the monthly chart is still very poor. Says that coffee, there's still, it's almost like crude oil. It looks like there's a glut of coffee right now and because the stochastic's down at 18, 16%. No, it is 18% in the weekly chart. And the MACD is held pretty nicely with a, with a W formation deflecting lower. But so far, you haven't had that lovely turn that we get with the, with the real W formations with, with the MACD running sharply as the price tries to get back to at least 97, 94, the pink nine period exponential moving average in the weekly. And right now, it's at 94.60. So, Ruby, I'm going to say this. I know that you, you, you do not mind attempting a low when you've got all the little ducks in order and it says there's a better risk reward right now. I'm thinking that there is a good risk reward for a, a little bit of a bounce, but I don't see anything, um, I don't see it as a sustained move. If at 94.60 by the end of the day, if it's able to close above 94.84, I say, hey, that's much better because if there's a follow through tomorrow, 96.20 will be the pink nine period moving average. But if there's any weakness from now until the close, um, that is, coffee's close, futures close uh, coming up, I'm just going to say to you, you just need a little more time. I like the fact that there was a long legged doji yesterday uh, on Friday. Uh, that candle says, 
pushing above, closing, let me make it real clear, in the techniques that I use, in the candlestick formations that I use, a close above Friday's high of 94.35, and so far it seems to be doing that, will be your first sign. The second sign is the stochastic really has to go above, it's at 8%, 12%, 15%, it has to get there quickly, otherwise it's just stuck. So don't get carried away, but if you are looking for a trade, let me go to the 120-minute chart. Yes, if you're looking for a trade at 94.60, if you get in at all, by now it's 10 minutes to 1, or close to 10 minutes to 1 Eastern time, by 10 minutes, no, 10 minutes past 2, if it's able to get to 94.84, it's at 94.75 right now, if it get to the 84 level, that 120-minute chart will give you a little bit of a clue to say, now there's a little bit of buying strength. So that's the only way I do it. But if you are getting in just a small position, that's the only way I would do it. I don't see anything yet that says, wow, this is going to be a V-shaped recovery because the stochastic is just taking too long to move over 12%. So that's just the way I'm looking at it right now. We'll look at it again tomorrow. But be careful. I would. This is the one that I would add to if it rallies strongly into the close, um, are you already in? Okay, then what I'm going to say to you, have a little trading stop, but now it's already 94.80. As we're talking, oh, this is what I want to see. 94.75? Wow. Oh, it moves in five cent increments. Sorry. I think that's what it moves in. So I, I've never traded this. So I'm just looking at it. So I am looking at it saying 94.85 is what I want to see on a closing basis at least for two 10-minute bars, and then I think it should go higher. So you're in it. Just have a tight stop. This is your entry point is the perfect risk-reward on a, on a short-term basis. Looking out, I think it needs quite a bit more work before I can say that uh, coffee's made it slow. It's going to be trading much higher. So it's just a, a short-term trade initially. Uh, next question I got, oh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, we haven't been to Martinez, California for a little while. How are you? I'm doing quite well, Basil. How about you? I'm good, thank you. I was calling about uh, Nordic American tankers. I know we've talked many times in the past about the stock, and um, just wanted to bring it up. Just often we talk about you know stocks that are kind of under the radar, more on the periphery, and so this one is one I've, I've been in for not too long now, and got in around two, and I've already. I'm, I'm free in the trade at this point, so I'm just going to let the other shares kind of go and have a stop in place. But just wanted to bring it to your attention. So, folks, we're looking at NAT, NAT, at $4.33. Today alone, it's up $0.20, cents, uh, up 4.96%. So this is a very interesting company. There was this guy, uh, this is Nordic, uh, Nordic American Tankers, maybe 10 years ago or something, I remember him being interviewed by Kramer, and he said, we 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 raise our dividend for the past 40-something years, um, every single quarter, and this is a fantastic company. I, uh, we're putting a lot of money in, and when was it? Let me just go back. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and oh, it was way back. It was in 2005, and it was just spectacular. Look at this monthly chart. It goes from the 10 area, has a little bit of a rally. It goes to $55, and the guy is just saying, this is, uh, uh, we're doing everything we can. We, 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 we give the dividends. It's a fantastic, this is, this is the CEO, fantastic company. And then the thing goes from 55, has a little bit of a decline, and it declines down to the low that was made just before our friend here, Brent in Martinez, California, started looking at it. It goes down to $1.82. I'd say $55 to $1.82 is a little bit of a hit. And now it's trading at $4.32. It, it has done this before, a very strong move. It had a move from the fives up to the uh, 14s back in 2015, 14-15. Uh, and then it just gave it all back plus. So this is what I'm going to say. First of all, absolutely congratulations. I know that you keep these things on your radar. You have a way of looking at them. You also have a really good way of timing and um, there's no question about it, getting in uh, at around about 2, seeing it now at 4.32, and you've got over 100% um, profit, so you've taken your money off the table, you've kept the rest, 
and now you're playing with the uh, with the uh, the with the uh, makers' money. And now what we're looking at is where would the support be? So the fact that Nordic um, Nordic American tankers is doing so well is telling us about uh, the shipping that's out there, and I think that this is a very important ingredient. So I just. I want you to look at the single leg A up in the weekly chart. And just to give, if you've got a moment, and I'll give you some parameters that I'd be looking at as support because the technicals are really strong. They're holding very nicely. Have you got a moment? I do, Basil. Okay, we'll be back with Brent in a moment. And we're looking at the Dow of 26, SB's down two, and Nat. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And just before I, I, I had forgotten about it, we're back with Brent. But I just wanted to say that uh, for KC, I forgot really actually asked what are the tar upside targets. I, I spoke about the first one. But actually, the first upside target would be 9624, the pink. A nine period moving average, and if we can hold there steady for at least one day, 97.19 is the uh, uh, black uh, 14 period exponential moving average. I think that's getting a little aggressive at this point. So let's go back to uh, um, Nordic. There we go. Nordic American tankers trading at 4.31. So I was chuckling to myself during the break because I, I was looking at the nine period moving average, which is at 3.51, and the 14 period moving average support at 3.18. And I'm saying, OK, Brent, that would be the support level. And then Brent turns around and says to himself, what is he talking about? That's a 30% decline. And I'm saying to myself, no, wait a minute, it's gone from the $1.50 or two, even $2 area to the four, today's high of 447. 
normally that would just be a reasonable <laughs> pullback. So Brent, there are three things that I wanted to talk to you about. One is, I've only got this in a leg C right now. I think it's going to go a little bit higher, maybe into the 453 area, and then it probably could digest. The perfect scenario would be it digests and it takes time, and all it does is goes to maybe 385, 370, hold steady, and actually then either goes sideways for a little bit longer or actually makes a new recovery high. That's the scenario one. Scenario two is the single leg A up says there's something going on here that's an aberration. It's more news driven than fact driven. And then if there is a pullback in the next two weeks and NAT, NAT is trading underneath $3 and 10 cents, it could give back even more. That, I think, is a less likely scenario, but I just had to give it as that single leg A scenario. It's uh, called the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. And then the third, the third thing is that it has had a huge move. The natural thing would be for it to take a breather of time and some price. And that says that 351 is a possibility for some kind of a pullback. So what you've done is perfect. You've taken your, your core off. You're holding the the, the, the the gift that you've got. And I would just say, between expect that there'll be a test of the 402 to the 392 level in the next couple of days. Congratulations. Thank you for calling, Brent. All right. Thank you very much, Basil. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Folks, stay tuned. You've got Steve Rhodes. You've got Dave White. And